One of the questions people ask me all the time is, is how long it takes me to charge my electric car. Really, it takes me 20 seconds to charge my electric car. It takes me 10 seconds to plug it in. Done. And then when I get ready to leave, it takes me 10 seconds to unplug it and wrap up the cord and, and get ready to go. Now, the, the bigger question that people are really interested in is how long does it take the car to charge? That's a more nuanced question. We can talk about that later. My name is Dave. My last name is Herb, spelled E-R-B. And I'm a retired automotive engineer. I'm also a member of the Blue Horizons Project Community Council and I, I applied to be a member because I, in retirement I felt like I still had something to offer and Asheville's a place that is very accepting of that. I'm, I'm a retired automotive engineer. I spent most of that time as a, as a college professor but my specialty throughout has been energy and emissions and over the last 35 years or so of a 40-year career uh, my specialty narrowed even further to a focus, a very strong focus on electric and hybrid electric vehicles. A vehicle electrification is really essential if we're going to have sustainable transportation in the long run. So I, I'm here today to talk about my, one of my two electric cars. My wife and I have not bought gas for two and a half years. Um, we actually haven't bought electricity at the house for six and a half years, and so we, we charge these cars on sunshine. We drive on sunshine. We, we do pay an electric bill, but it's just for being connected to Duke's system. So this car here is, is one of our two cars. It's a Chevy Spark EV. There's not all that many of them. There's about 7,500 of these. Most of the Sparks that you see are gasoline cars but Chevy built 7,500 of them to meet the letter of the law in California, and that's where this car actually started. It, it spent three years on a lease in California before we bought it. Um, it's a very inexpensive car, but the main reason we bought it was that it, it's just the perfect Asheville car. It's tiny, and so with the narrow streets and the tight parking here, it, this is a great car for this environment, for running around town. One of the things I really like about this car is it's pretty conventional, except for the fact that it's a, an electric drive. You get in, I've got a transponder key in my pocket, like most cars have these days. You get in, push the power button, dashboard lights up, um, you're ready to go. The controls are mostly knobs and buttons. There's a little bit that's done through a screen for like the infotainment system and all that, but it has a normal shift lever, a little electronic parking brake here that behaves pretty, pretty conventionally. And I like that. I like to touch the, the controls. Uh, a lot of, of modern cars, and not just electric, gasoline too, have um, touch screens, and I'm, I'm not really that fond of that. I like to reach out and not have to look at the control, be able to feel it. So when I get in the car, I can see a battery graphic, and it'll show the, me the state of charge on the battery, and uh, it'll also show me a range estimate. 73 miles is what it's expecting right now, because it's been cold lately. This car gets about 80-some miles on the EPA cycle, in warm weather, it'll get close to 100. In the coldest part of winter, it might only get 60. But um, it'll show you the best estimate of range, and then it'll show you a range of ranges. It'll show you the maximum if you drive gently, and it'll show you a minimum if you drive it aggressively. And so that's kind of nice to be able to to see what's your range, understand there's a little um, a little bit of variation in that because of the way you drive. This happens too with your gas car. It also will show you uh, which way you're trending. It'll put little lighted dots on these lines here to show that. Um, over the 10,000 miles we've owned this car, it's two and a half years, but it's been a year and a half of that was a pandemic, so we haven't been driving that much. Uh, we've driven a little over 10,000 miles, and we've averaged 5.3 miles per kilowatt hour. Just to give you a sense of that, um, 
in, in energy terms, that's equivalent to 178 miles per gallon. And the best thing about those gallons is they didn't come from Saudi Arabia. They came from the roof of my house. We have a totally electric house with six kilowatts of solar on the roof. And so basically we're driving this car on sunshine. I spend a lot of time doing electric vehicle advocacy. And you run into a lot of myths about electric vehicles. One of them is that um, you're just moving the, the emissions. You're, you have a longer tailpipe, but it's a coal-fired car. And there's a tiny element of truth in that, but, but realistically, it is a much, much cleaner car, both in terms of criteria pollutants and in terms of greenhouse gas pollutants than any conventional car out there, even if you were charging off a of coal. And most of the grid is not coal anymore. So um, it is a cleaner way to drive. It is a much lower maintenance way to drive. Uh, another thing that you hear is that electric vehicles are really expensive. Well, this car actually was quite inexpensive. It, it was probably less expensive than a comparable gasoline car. Um, right now, the, the markets are a little messed up with the supply chain. This is November of 2021 as we're filming this. In normal times, this car could be bought for well under $10,000. Another myth you hear is that there's nowhere to charge these cars. Well, this car actually doesn't, we don't road trip this car. It, we charge it here at home on a regular 120 volt outlet like you have in, in your house. It, just normal electric socket. That is our electric vehicle charger for this car. But even our other car, which we take road trips in, we've taken it to Minneapolis, we've taken it to the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, we've taken it to Florida. You can pretty much go anywhere you want in this country quite conveniently if you have a car with 200 mile range and a DC fast charge port. Another thing that you hear people say is that electric vehicles will crash the electric grid. There's not enough electric generation capacity. That's simply false. It's, it's, it's beyond, um, Beyond just a misstatement, it's, it's simply false. The, ele the electric utility has to be able of meeting the highest demand hour in a 15-year planning window. There has to be enough generating capacity to meet that. And so as long as you stay away from that one hour in 15 years when you charge the car, and you're going to do that because the logical time to charge is at night, which is off-peak. but. If you stay away from that window, there's enough electric capacity, generating capacity out there to charge way more electric cars than you're likely to put out there. One of the great beauties of electric cars is that they are really, really, really simple. There's almost no maintenance required. Maintenance for an electric car consists of uh, filling your washer bottle, your windshield washer bottle, replacing your wiper blades, and rotating the tires every 10,000 miles. That's pretty typical maintenance for an electric car. And so you don't have oil changes, you don't have timing belt changes, all those things that eat up both time and money on a regular basis. You also don't have to go anywhere to charge it. So that 10 minutes that you spend once a week or however often at the gas station gets replaced with 20 seconds of plugging in and unplugging at home. So the maintenance is really inexpensive and, and not almost non-existent. So electric vehicles, there's a lot of things to like about driving them. Even this, the low performance economy cars like this one, for around town performance, as an automotive engineer could give you the performance you demand on the highway from any given class of car, I have to give you a lot more performance around town at the low speed. So a car that is just kind of normal out at 65, 70 miles an hour on the highway actually has tremendous acceleration away from a stoplight, zero to 30. It, this car is almost like a Camaro, uh, not quite like the most high-performance Camaros, but it's, it's pretty close um, just because of the way electric motors behave. So there's that, they're quiet. But I hear people say a lot of the time that, that electric vehicles are only for cities and rural people can't use them. And that nothing could be more false than that. This car can make an 80 mile round trip commute. It, it can make 60 in the worst possible weather in, and just everything going against you. It can still make, do a 60 mile round trip. And so a lot of people could use this car and it is a lot 
cheaper per mile to drive it. It costs about, uh, this car cost me about two cents a mile for the electricity, which is a lot less than you pay even to fuel a Prius, even at two dollars a gallon for gas, and right now gas is over three. The other thing about that is that we get gas shortages from time to time. This part of North Carolina is at the wrong place in the gasoline supply lines. And so we frequently get multi-day interruptions in our, our gasoline supply, which leads to big long lines and people panic and overbuy and then there's no gas, then gas stations run out because of the panic. With an electric car, you're somewhat insulated from that. Even if you have a power outage in your neighborhood, there's probably a neighborhood not too far away that has electric vehicle chargers. The grocery stores do it. A lot of city facilities do it, things like that. There's lots of electric vehicle chargers out there. You could leave your house that has a power outage, go to some place that has power. And remember, a power outage takes out a gas station too. The gas station needs electricity just to pump the gas. Thanks for watching this video today. Um, I love my electric vehicles and I hope everybody would understand why. Um, and, and what I really hope is that people would recognize that their next car should have a plug on it.